Hi, ST fans, and welcome back. Nitrox. Enriched air. The de devil gas. Whatever you call it, Nitrox is now a staple on the scuba diving scene. And in this video, I'll be telling you why being certified to use this gas is a must for all divers. For those here for the first time, my name's Mark. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Scuba Diver Media brand. And welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Take two seconds, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. Want some free stuff? Everyone loves free, right? Check out the description below for all sorts of goodies, like a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. Where we can, we'll link you to the destinations or equipment we talk about in the support our channel section in the description. For transparency, we'll earn a small commission each time you purchase after clicking on one of these links. And this will go directly back into making more content for you to enjoy. Now, let's dive into the video. Oxygen enriched air, or nitrox as it's more commonly known, is now a staple on the recreational diving scene. But it isn't that long ago that it was once only used by technical divers. And even then, it was still widely regarded as devil gas by old school divers who thought good old fashioned compressed air was all anyone needed. And why would you want to try this newfangled mixed stuff? How things have changed, it's now among the most popular specialty courses of all the major training agencies. Yet I still see, and hear, people who have this baseless fear of diving nitrox. Let's start with what nitrox is. Essentially, it's a mix of nitrogen and oxygen. Take a deep breath. Clean, fresh air, right? Well, that inhalation filled your lungs with a mix of 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. So you're breathing nitrox right now. However, in the diving realm, at least in the world of recreational diving, nitrox is typically attributed to the most common oxygen enriched mixes of 32% and 36%, although the former is the blend you will most commonly encounter out in the big wide scuba diving world. So called recreational nitrox is basically any mix from 21% to 40%. Beyond that, you're in the realms of technical diving, and I'm staying firmly in the world of recreational diving in this video. So. Why dive a tank of 32% nitrox? Well, cast your mind back to your entry level diving course. You'll recall it's the nitrogen in what you are breathing that dictates how long you can stay at a certain depth before you have to make your ascent back up into the shallows. So by diving a mix that has more oxygen and less nitrogen, this means that you can extend your bottom time, especially on repetitive dives. And we all want to spend more time under the water, don't we? Say you were diving to 70 feet. On air, your NDL will be around 40 minutes. On 32% nitrox, you'll be looking at around 60 minutes. Massive difference. Want more clarity? The best way to describe this benefit is with an example dive. The Thistlegorm shipwreck in the Egyptian Red Sea is one of the world's greatest wreck dives. It's like an underwater museum. Its cargo holds are chock full of motorcycles, ammunition, trucks, rubber boots, airplane parts, just much more, dating for World War II. It lies in around 100 feet of water and it's the perfect wreck for a nitrox dive. Because believe me, you'll want to spend as long mooching about exploring in the holes as possible. On the first dive, if you dive in nitrox, you will get significantly more minutes on the no deco limit than those diving air. But it's on dive number two and beyond that the difference becomes more apparent. On dive two on a thistle gom, you can be waving bye to your air diving buddy teams in your group a good 30 minutes or more before you get even anywhere near the NDL on nitrox. This is huge. Over and above this defining point, there are many reasons to dive nitrox. Some people insist they feel better, more alert and less fatigued after a dive on nitrox over a dive on compressed air. There doesn't seem to be any scientific proof on why this should be and I've heard many instructors dismiss it as being just in their head. But hey, if you dive on nitrox and feel better after a dive, for whatever the reason, go for it. I've also seen many a diver who seems to be purely using nitrox so that they look techy. I'm sure you'll have seen them. 
the swan about on the boat, usually waffling about epic dives that they've done in the past, have a multi-mix full-on technical dive computer, or two, and then when they actually get in the water, they just bimble about in 30 feet of water and blitz through their guest supply in 30 minutes. Nothing against these people. These wannabe techies, as I call them, buy all the tech gear, so that's good for the manufacturers. And if they're paying for the nitrox for all of their dives, then it's good for the dive centers as well. So, winner all round. Then there are those who, for whatever reason, want to build in a safety margin on their dives. They might be older and not wanting to put undue stress on their bodies, or maybe they've previously had some dive-related issue and are playing safe. Whatever the reason, they will dive with a 32% nitrox mix, but leave their dive computer set to air mode. Thus, when they reach their NDL and begin their ascent, in reality, they are well within the actual no deco limit of their chosen gas. This means they massively reduce the amount of nitrogen being absorbed by their bodies. The only caveat with that is to ensure you do not inadvertently exceed the maximum operating depth of your chosen nitrox mix. I've seen people deal with that by dying with two computers, one set on nitrox and one set on air. But to me, that's just adding in confusing elements you don't need to be dealing with on a dive. Just set your depth, know where you're going, leave it at that. Talking of MOD, that brings me nicely onto one of the most common misconceptions about nitrox. Too many times I hear people say, I don't need to dive nitrox as I'm not going deep. Nitrox is not a deep diving gas. As I said earlier, I'm only dealing with the recreational mixes here, but even 32% has an MOD of around 110 feet, which is well within the commonly referenced recreational depth limit of 130 feet. The higher the oxygen content, the shallower the MOD. However, what nitrox does is allow you to spend more of your precious dive time on the deeper elements of your dive, as I clearly showed in the Thistlegorm element. I did a liverboard in Sudan back in 2007 and was extremely glad to be diving nitrox as all of the sharks were milling around down at 100 feet plus and so I wanted to spend as much time with them as possible. And the extended bottom time afforded by my nitrox mix was very much appreciated. I've also heard people saying they get longer dive times on nitrox. Again, not strictly true. Yes, you may be able to spend longer at the deeper portions of your dive, as we've explained, but you will consume your nitrox mix just as quickly as you do compressed air. So if you drain a tank in 25 minutes, it doesn't matter what is in there, you'll be back on the boat at that time. Nitrox is not some magical cure-all for being an air hog. So why don't people dive on nitrox? Well, there are still some of the old guard who think compressed air is where it's at, and they aren't breathing some fancy mixed gas. But thankfully, this breeding mentality is dying out. I have heard dayboat divers say they aren't diving nitrox as they don't want to pay a premium over normal compressed air fills. Now, depending on where you are in the world, this is not typically more than a few dollars more per tank. And when you consider how much money these people have invested in their dive kit in the first place, not to mention they've paid for their place on the boat that day, it just seems bizarre to me that they won't chuck in an extra $20 or so for a gas that will allow them to enjoy more time under the water. The ones I really cannot fathom are the people who have paid hundreds, even thousands of pounds to go on a diving holiday and then resist paying $100 or more for a nitrox package during their stay. After spending all that money in the first place, why would you not do this? Not only do you get to spend more time under water, but you're also safer, as you're seriously reducing the amount of nitrogen being absorbed by your body over the course of all those repetitive dives on the trip. One more thing, if you're diving with a centre that can do custom nitrox mixes rather than just churn out 32%, consider the dive site you'll be visiting and what mixes will work the best. When I dived the Arisk and the aircraft carrier out of Pensacola in Florida, I was with MBT divers and they were happy to do whatever mix you wanted. We were doing a three tank dive on this monstrous aircraft carrier. And as I dived it several times before, I knew all of the dives would be centered around that main superstructure. At the time, the flight deck was at around 135 feet and the top of the superstructure was around 60 feet. Although it's now settled into the silt and it's quite significantly deeper. I opted for a 28%, a 32% and a 36% set of tanks. 
Most of the people on the boat just had three 32% tanks each. They couldn't understand why I had different mixes, but I had a dive plan. Dive one, I used a 28%, which allowed me to thoroughly explore the bottom couple of deck levels before making my ascent. Dive two, I used a 32% and concentrated on the mid deck levels. And for dive three, I used a 36% and focused on the remaining couple of decks on the top and to the smokestack. I ended up having much longer on the wreck on dives two and especially dive three because of using nitrox mixes which were better suited for the particular dives that I had planned and I was doing. At this precise moment in time, dive travel, well, travel in general to be honest, is still reeling from the COVID-19 pandemic, but things are slowly improving, with more and more countries starting to open up their borders and some semblance of normality peaking over the horizon. You might be diving in your own country, or you might be waiting anxiously for that first trip abroad. If you are not already Nitrox certified, now is the perfect time to do it. Many training agencies offer the Nitrox specialty as an online course, so you can complete it in the comfort of your own home, and then you're ready to reap the benefits on your next trip, wherever and whenever that may be. Many dive centers, and especially liverboards, now offer free Nitrox to certified divers during their stay or time on board. Why would you want to turn that bonus down? Do yourself a favor and get Nitrox certified whatever your current level of qualification, if you haven't already got your ticket. You know it makes sense. Do you dive nitrox? Why do you use an enriched oxygen mix for your diving? Leave your comments below, and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, maybe someone in our growing community will be able to. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our playlist for more inspirational and educational content. As always, stay safe, and if you're going diving soon, on Nitrox, enjoy.